All right then, so we've seen rather a lot of PHP and with that we've created this form right here. But when we click submit to add the pizza, we validate the input fields and all that jazz and that's cool. But with the data, we don't actually do anything. At the minute, we're just redirecting back to the index page. Now, it would be nice to take that data and store it in a database so that we could retrieve those pizzas later on and show them all on the index page. Now to do this, we'll be using the MySQL or MySQL database system and I'll be teaching you all the basics like how to create a database, save data, retrieve data and delete data as well. But first of all, let's look at the structure of a MySQL database from a bird's eye perspective. Just so when I'm talking about how our data is structured later, you know exactly what I mean. All right then, so we're gonna be using MySQL. And MySQL is a relational database management system that runs on a server. Now by relational, I just mean that our data tables can be related to one another with the use of something called foreign keys. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But anyway, to communicate with our database from our PHP files, we use a query language called SQL. And SQL or SQL just stands for Structured Query Language. So we use that to communicate from our PHP files to the database to do things like create new data in the database or to delete data or update data, etc. So what does one of these typical databases look like? Well, a database can contain several different tables. So in this example, we've got four tables here and each table would normally be used to store a specific type of record or data. So for example, we could have a users table to store user data, a blogs table to store blogs, a reviews table and a pizzas table, okay? Now, if we zoom in a little bit, each table is gonna look something like this. It's made up of rows and columns, right? Now, each row here, each row represents an individual record in that table and each column represents a property on that record. So we have two examples here, two different tables. We have a blogs table and in that we have an ID property for each record, a content property and a user ID. And over in the users table, we have an ID property for each record, an email property and a name property, okay? Now each column of data right here, each column would expect a particular type of data. For example, the user ID and the IDs, they could be integers and the content that would probably be a string and the email and names would be strings as well, okay? So each blog over here is written by a specific user. There's a specific user ID associated with each of these blog records. Now that user ID would correspond to an ID in the users table. So this is what is known as a foreign key. We use a foreign key to link the tables together if you like to say that, okay, I'm not gonna put all the user information in here that writes the blog, because that would be a waste when we already have it stored in the user's table. So instead, I'll use a foreign key called user ID to reference the user who has written this blog. So that's how the two tables are kind of linked. They're related, all right? So if we had a web page to display a blog post and we wanted to show the user information for that blog, we could use this foreign key right here to identify the user that wrote that blog and retrieve that user's information and show that then. So this is the whole crux behind a relational database. Now in our case, to begin with, we'll be keeping it really simple. We've got a form on our website to capture an email, a pizza title and some ingredients. So our table is gonna look something like this. So we're still gonna have an ID for each pizza we have the title, the ingredients, and the email, which we capture on the form. And we're also going to have a created app property, which will be a timestamp to say when this pizza was first created. Now, in the future, if we were to have actual real users on the website, the email field right here could be changed for a user ID, which could be a foreign key to a users table. But since we don't have any users or any kind of authentication system on this project, we'll just store the email inside the pizza's table. So there we go, that's what MySQL is. The takeaway points here are that a MySQL database can contain several different tables and each table stores a particular model or data type in that table, for example, pizzas or users. Now each row 
in that table is going to represent a single record, for example in our case a single pizza, and each column is going to represent a property of that record, for example the title of the pizza or the ingredients of the pizza. So we use SQL, the structured query language, to communicate with the database from our PHP code and that's what we're going to be doing going forward. But in the next lesson I'm going to start by creating our first MySQL database.